So I'm going to just take a few minutes of your time today and update you about the Civil Service Benevolent Fund. The purpose of my job as a Regional Development Officer is to visit as many civil service offices, like yours, to talk to as many civil servants as possible, like you, to let them know two things. The first thing is to let them know that the fund exists. And the second thing is to make sure they know the fund exists to support them. We exist to support you. So we're going to talk today about three specific things in connection with the fund. The first is financial support. That's the first and most critical thing that we're going to speak about. The second is information services. So we're here to provide financial support and information services. The third thing that we're going to talk about is how do you become eligible to receive that support? How do you become eligible to apply for that assistance, financial and information? Now, if we just start with the first one and talk about the financial services, the financial support that we provide, you should each by now, I hope, have one of these little leaflets. Uh, there are some under the end chairs, I think, if you want to pass them along if you've not got one. And this little leaf that just really highlights a summary of what it is that the fund does. Now, on the inside cover, you'll see some financial information in terms of the assistance we gave in the year 2006. So let's update you a little bit in what happened in 07 and 08. In those two years together, across the whole of the UK, including Northern Ireland, the fund supplied more than £9 million of financial assistance to support around 13,000 civil servants. Nine million pounds to around 13,000 civil servants. That's a staggering amount of money, isn't it? That's a real help, that's a real benefit. But you don't know those 13,000 people. That's pretty anonymous, isn't it? So let's make it a little bit more personal for us here in Wales. In the last two years, in Wales specifically, the fund has given more than 450,000 pounds worth of financial assistance to around 700 civil servants. Now that is personal because those are people that you know. Those are your friends, those are your colleagues. They may be people that you work with in this very building. Somebody that you share a coffee with at lunchtime. Somebody that you have a chat with in the elevator on the way up to the office. Those are people that you know and the fund is supporting them and here to support you also. So you might have thought that over the next 10 or so minutes you were gonna be sitting very quietly just listening to a presentation, but that's not the case because I'm now going to search for three glamorous volunteers, for three glamorous assistants. I think we're going to start over here with Rose. And you don't have to worry, there's not too much to do. And I think we'll come here to Anne, and then down the back to Bob. Okay, so we'll come to these in a second. What I've just given out to my, to my three uh, volunteers is uh, some statistics relating to the assistance that the fund has given. Now, we've just chosen three specific areas of assistance. If there's something today that's on your mind, if there's something that's going on in your family, or you're aware of a colleague who's struggling with something, please don't assume that just because we might not touch on that specific issue today, don't assume, please, that we don't deal with it. We're limited for time, so we're going to focus on three specific areas. Now, first and foremost, I'm just going to ask Rose to shout at the top of her voice, just the top two lines in black, please. 17 in 100 civil servants were ill last year. Some are struggling to get back to work. Thank you very much. 17% of your colleagues, 17 and 100 civil servants, ill last year, health issues, and some of them struggling to get back to work. Now let's move down the, the line to Anne. Would you mind, Anne, reading just the top two lines? Just read the top two lines on that poster. Thank you. Six in every 100 civil servants coping with bereavement. Thank you. Six in 100 dealing with the bereavement. And finally, Bob, at the back. Seven in every 100 civil servants have family or relationship difficulties. Thank you. So I hope you heard all that. 17 in 100 dealing with health issues, 6 in 100 dealing with bereavement, a further 7 in 100 dealing with family or relationship issues. Those are staggering statistics. That makes up 30% of your colleagues. In your workplace area here, we have something in the region of maybe 100 today. Take out 30 of your colleagues, separate a third of them off, and those are the numbers that we're talking about. That's quite staggering, isn't it? Oftentimes people have a misconception about the fund. They think perhaps that we're here specifically for people with health issues, specifically for people who are on sick leave. Well, we are here for those people, but not only for those people. As you can hear from those statistics, we're also here to help those who have dealt with bereavements. We're also here to help those who are struggling with family or marriage issues. So let's just take a few examples of, of the type of assistance that we've been able to give. 
In terms of the health issues, I want to tell you a specific example, and this also opens up another uh, little area of information I want to give you. I spoke to a lady a lot, number of weeks uh, previous to this, and she told me her story. Her husband had been taken very ill, and he had to come out of work completely. So their two incomes have now become one. And this was a couple who didn't have kids. There was just the two of them. So they looked at the commitments, they looked at the responsibilities, they tightened their belts, and they were able to cope on just her wage. She's a civil servant, and they just were able to manage okay. But his illness progressed and continued to get worse. He needed her to be at home. He needed somebody to care for him while he was at home. She then took three months of unpaid leave. Now, the most frugal of us, the best money manager among us, might be able to manage on very little income. But I'd say there are very few of us that can manage on zero income, and that was now the situation for this family. What did she do? They had rent to pay, they had electricity bills, they had a telephone, they needed to have food in the cupboards, they had heating bills, because don't forget, while this uh, man was off work sick at home, the heating was on all day long, so the electricity bills were getting higher and higher. She was stressed and she was anxious. How was she going to make ends meet while she was also looking after her husband? She contacted us and we made a non-repayable grant available to her to cover the cost of those essential household bills. What a relief. She was now able to focus on actually looking after her husband. That was the reason she'd taken the time off in the first place. She didn't have to be anxious about all those other stresses and strains and the financial issues that were pressing upon her because the fund was there to support her. When people are dealing with a period of sickness, they can often be financially impacted. Now here's a question for you. There's a, there's a prize of a packet of mints for the person who shouts out. What happens to your wages as civil servants if you're off work more than six months on sick leave? Anybody know? Oh, oh this was the first shout. Here we go. Half pay. That can make a significant dent in your family's finances and your family's budgets because you still have all the same responsibilities. You still have all the same commitments, but now you have half of the income. What do you do? You can contact the Civil Service Benevolent Fund because those are the types of things that we're here to support people with. Or there may be all sorts of other issues that affect a family when there are health issues. Perhaps a child with a long-term health issue, a disability, it could be autism, it could be learning disabilities, it could be physical disabilities. All of those things have an impact on a family and can have an impact on their finances. And if that's the case, the fund is here to support you. Now, I hope that you've been paying attention because if you have, you'll have spotted that we are here specifically to help you as civil servants, but we are also here for another group of people. We are here also for your dependents. So, here's the next packet of mints. Who are your dependents? You don't have to name them, but just what groups of people would you normally class as being dependents inside your family? Children, who said children? Here we go. Your children are your dependents, of course they are. Our children are the most important thing in the world to us, but what if something affects our children? If that has an impact on us as a family and our finances, the fund is here to support us. Parents, elderly parents, or elderly relatives who depend upon us. In fact, anybody who depends upon us financially, the fund is here to help us to support them if they are in need. All of those groups are here to help, or we're here to help all of those groups in their time of 